Jason had not had a big impact as a scorer before today. Did you see him making progress on that front, or was this kind of out of the blue today? Well, he um, he came. He's had a couple of real good practices defensively. He's been really good in position, and I I told him that. And um, and then offensively, I thought he he really let the game come. I mean, he took the open shots when they were there, and attacked when it was there. He he, that's his game. He's kind of a a complete player who does a little bit of everything and uh, understands how to play. And again, I was as pleased with his defense as his offense. And Ty and um, DeAndre offensively weren't scoring like they had been. So, you know, the way Kyle played in the first half offensively and shooting the ball was a clinic. And then to see Braxton, um, that was good that he stepped up in light of, you know, Florida State guarded us tough in the second half. And we got some good looks, but they made it harder. And we weren't quite at the same clip. but. Defensively, well, I'll wait for that question because I'm ready for it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was going to ask. It looked like uh, defensively for about 35 minutes. Yes, we, were, yeah, we were locked in and we were ready to play defensively. Our length, our slides, we contested stuff. Did they miss some shots? Yes. Were we perfect? No. But we said we're going to work. And I said at halftime, I said, if you can win this with your defense. Because, you know, offense, we've talked about it many times, can come and go. But defensively, you have to just have to make them shoot a contested shot and earn their shots and not give them second chance points. And I thought we did that at a very acceptable level for us. Uh, Tony, at one point, you guys were 21-0 in points off turnovers. Florida State's averaging about 15 a game. How much was that part of the game plan to try to get those points, turning them over? Uh, our, we scored 21 off of their turnovers. Well, at the end, they might have scored a few off of our turnovers, but we'll leave that. Um, but. Uh, I think, um, yeah, no, we we, um, we were active. The crowd was great. You know, our guys, they were locked in. And and at times, you know, when we're playing, we have some versatility size-wise. You know, when you have some bigger bodies on the floor, you know, whether it's Braxton and DeAndre and Jack and Mominy with the size, that that's pretty good. And I think we clogged up some lanes. We showed on ball screens and got back quick. And Florida State, you know, they weren't on their game, so I, I understand that. But we took care of what we had to take care of. Uh, Tony, you said you've seen good things from Braxton in, in practice so far this year, but he's flown under the radar in, in, in some games. I mean, how has that overall transition been for him this year? Yeah, I'm sure, you know, up and down, you know, getting used to new teammates, a new system, um, and, you know, just finding the right opportunities. And I think he's hopefully this is, you know, a sign of things to come because he has the experience and he's, again, a, a complete player. And so, you know, with his physicality and his smarts, he understands how to play that adds a dimension where he can play like DeAndre on the perimeter if need be and guard on the perimeter or play the four, and that gives us versatility. Nick one in the back. Yeah, Coach, talk about Kyle. You mentioned he was on fire today. I mean, a couple of those shots at the end of the second, first half were just, I don't know. Right. I don't know what you thought about those, but yeah. uh, talk about the run he's on of going back to Marshall. Yeah. Our esteemed SID said he set a record of 11 three threes or shot 11 threes in a row from the Marshall game to this game. Um, the previous record was eight. Um, so, um, uh, you know, he, he just he's been shooting well in practice and he's working at it. And um, as we talked about, one of you guys asked me, I think he is mechanically sound, but what he does have the ability to do is sometimes twist or turn in the air and find it. and. Um, you know he can he can get it rolling for sure, and that was we needed that because it was hard. And uh, our shooting in the first half perhaps stretched the lead. I don't know if it was great offense, but um, but great offense is getting him open shots. So I'll take that. And when he's shooting like he was, yeah, Tony uh, Leonard plays twelve players in the first half, and you went a little deeper with eight and gave Jay a couple minutes. Were you concerned that that might wear you down because of their depth? I mean, you know, it seemed like the timeouts were longer. I don't know if because it was an ESPN game. It seemed like there was more rest. But it was just going to be who could impose their will on each other and outlast. I mean, it's always been like that against his teams. And, uh, you know, they're physical. We try to be physical. So certainly fatigue was part of it. And I think that played into the poor shooting on both teams in the second half. But, um, you know, that's what we have. We have right now, we're at eight. I feel seven, eight. I think Jay, you know, I thought that was a matchup with the big kid um, when Jay went in there. And, and that's, you know, what we were going to stick with. And again, that versatility of Dre and Braxton to give a perimeter guy a blow if need be or a forward, I think, helps out. So 
that's where we're at, and hopefully we'll keep adding more in that eight or nine man rotation. But we're at eight. With Isaiah departing, you lose a little bit of that intangibles feeling. Do you see some of that stepping up with these guys diving for loose balls and yeah. all that stuff? And who's really been the, the leader in that front of kind of stepping up where those things that Isaiah did last year, taking those over? Jack Salt has, and then I think Braxton did today. You know, Braxton's, Braxton's an alert defender, and so I thought those two guys that I mentioned Kihei has done it before um, with his on-ball pressure. Um, and I think I told him he's done so much for us. He can play better. I think we can play better in certain spots. But I think collectively we were good. You know, you got DeAndre with his length sliding, and um, you know the guys just worked hard. But to answer specifically, Jack and I thought Braxton today were you know bringing that awareness. Tell you you guys you have a trio of these top ten games, and you made that one at times look easy. Um, as as you get this group from the non-conference into the into the conference play, how re refreshing, how gratifying was it to see how locked in they were right off the bat? Yeah, I think that's experience, and you know, again, preseason rankings, non-conference rankings, you know, kind of important. They just mean you played well, at least non-conference. But it's just who's ready and who's playing well and executing. And again, I'd say that as well as we know that. And that was the challenge for our guys. We knew that they were talented, and uh, they have uh, they had some experience too. But you know that's road basketball too in the ACC. And um, you know the, the home crowd came out right. We came out right, and um, you know, we'll have a test against Boston College. Shots around the rim. You guys seem to generate quite a bit of an offensive performance around the bucket, especially in the first half. How much right. of that was passing related, given the? length that FSU right. has. Yeah, no, I like that we were, we were offense. We only had nine offensive rebounds, but I thought we were active on the glass. I thought because they're, you know, always going to key on Ty and Kyle and DeAndre at times, if we can slip some of those passes, that's what got us um, scoring a little bit in the second half. But um, those guys draw a lot of attention, so the ability to do that, and with our size and length, you know, that's where Jack and Mamadi are on the glass. Braxton's a good rebounder, too. Coach, your team shot 16 of 18 from the line today. How important is it to keep shooting so good from the line, especially going into ACC play, going up against all these top teams? That's right. Uh, possessions, you know, games will come down to possessions. So you want to make the most in Florida State in the first half. You know, they had a chance to maybe build on their lead, and they struggled from the line in the first half. I'm not sure what they shot. But um, no, that's, that's refreshing. It's great to see Jack knock down a couple free throws as well. There were a number of guys from your first couple teams here sitting behind the bench today. I didn't uh, see him. Who's here? Like Will, Sammy, Calvin Baker, Good. Solo. Awesome. What's it mean for you to have those guys come back? And when you do see them, what's it what Wonderful. goes through your mind? Ten years, you know, and, and uh, they were, you know, certainly a big part of laying the foundation of the program. Fine young men. I was fortunate, obviously, to to get this job at that time and get to coach them, but it'll be great to catch up. I, I knew it's it's alumni, a basketball alumni weekend, so to see uh, those guys that played for you um, it was great. And um, I remember last time, those guys know what we're doing. I mean, we've changed some things, but they'll they'll coach us up. I didn't hear them tonight, but or today, but they'll coach us up if we're out of position or we're not setting proper screens. And actually, I don't think we screen as well in the second half. So Will Sherrill will let me know about it because he knows everything. So I'll be ready for that at at the uh, reception. Thank <laughs> you.